Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox recording here to let you know that achieving album quality vocal mixes is actually one of the most easy things to achieve even if you're working within a budget project studio only using the stock plugins within your DAW. And I'm gonna prove it to you and show you exactly how in this video. Let's dive into it. So one of the most common complaints that I hear over and over again from people that watch my videos is they say that they have trouble mixing vocals and that their vocals sound really amateur and nothing like the vocals that they hear on their favorite records. Now a huge, huge mistake, actually there are a few mistakes that people make right off the bat is they blame their gear, especially their plugins. I hear people say, oh, I bought such and such plugin bundle and my vocals still sound bad and amateurish. Or I bought this insert expensive microphone or preamp or outboard compressor. None of that matters. You don't need any of that. All you need is a basic dynamic mic like an SM58 and the stock plugins in any DAW that you happen to be using and you can produce 100% album quality vocals. And I'm going to show you exactly how right now. Now, right now I have a mix pulled up of a project that I recorded a while ago in my budget project studio using this mic, which is the Shure SM7B, straight into a cheapo PreSonus Digimax preamp, and that's it. Again, completely done in my project studio. And let's pay close attention to what this raw vocal sounds like. Let's check it out. So as you can hear, it sounds terrible. It pretty much sounds just like every other home recorded vocal, right? It's all over the place, very boxy, very dark. I just wanted to play it raw so you know exactly what I'm working with here. Now what most people tend to do is right away blame the gear. Then they go out and spend a bunch of money on gear they don't need and then they overdo and overcomplicate the mixing process. We're not gonna do either one of those things in this video. I'm gonna take this exact vocal and I'm going to put it through my typical vocal chain, which by the way, I use on almost every single mix that I mix, regardless if it's rock, metal, male vocals, female vocals, studio vocals, live vocals. This right here that I'm sharing with you is my go-to plugin chain and it always works. And by the way, I'm doing all of this with basic, as a matter of fact, pretty outdated stock plugins in my DAW. This can be done in Reaper, Logic, Studio One, Cubase, and even the free versions of these DAWs. Do not believe idiots online. You don't need expensive equipment to achieve pro level results. And I'm gonna prove it to you right now. Okay, so I just activated my vocal chain and I'm going to play the exact same sample back and let's hear how it's sounding. And just like that, that same amateurish vocal recording sounds like a vocal that you'd hear on one of your favorite records. And again, the only gear used was this microphone, the Shure SM7B, plugged into an old cheapo Digimax preamp by PreSonus, and that's it. And the only processing at all on these vocals are all done with stock plugins in my DAW. So with that being said, let's go through the chain so you can copy this chain and achieve the same results that I'm achieving. The first plugin in my chain is a saturation plugin and I'm just adding very, very subtle saturation to make the vocal sound a little more analog. Don't overthink this. Use whatever stock saturator you have in your DAW and use it so subtly that you barely hear it. The second plugin in my chain is a stock compressor that's set up just to compress the vocal ever so slightly before the vocal hits the EQ plugin. Let's look at how much gain reduction is taking place in this compressor. Very modest, around 3 dB of compression. I have a very low ratio and I honestly did not even touch attack and release because this compressor is just doing a very small amount of work just to get the vocal slightly more in check before it hits the EQ. Don't worry, we're gonna apply more compression down the chain. Okay, and here is my EQ, and this is where people really go wrong. They're too scared to get rid of low frequency and lower mids. So in this case, I'm rolling off all frequencies below around 160 hertz, 
pulling out some lower mids and boosting the top end ever so slightly. Now these vocals were recorded with a dynamic mic, which is naturally darker than the condenser microphone. But even when I record vocals with the condenser mic, my EQ will look very similar. Again, I'm not exaggerating. This is pretty much the exact same plugin chain that I use on virtually every mix that I mix. Vocals are extremely simple. People just tend to overcomplicate things. Okay, up next, I have another compressor. Now this compressor is here to really help even out the vocal and it's working a little harder than that first compressor. Let's take a look. So as you can see, around 16 dB of compression. I'm using a slightly higher ratio. And again, I'm not too worried about attack and release. Remember, these are vocals, not drums. I'm mainly paying attention to gain reduction and ratio. So up next, I have a limiter. Now, if you notice, it's actually the exact same plugin as the compressor plugins that you saw previously. I'm just using it as a limiter by using a very high ratio of 100 to one. Now let's see how hard this guy's working. So as you can see, not as hard. It's only lopping off around 2 dB of gain reduction. But again, the net effect of the first compressor, the second compressor, and now the limiter, is you have a nice controlled vocal that does not sound over compressed. What people do is they go out and spend a million dollars on some plugin and they slam their vocal and wonder why it sounds weird. We have to remember that back in the analog days, the console, tape machine, outboard gear, all of these pieces of gear added subtle compression and saturation to the source sound that not only added a nice color to the sound, but it also helped keep the sound in control in a way that's much more musical and much more transparent. And that's what I'm emulating here in my DAW using nothing but stock plugins. Pretty cool. Okay, and then finally, I just have a basic de to control the sibilance in her vocals. Let's see what it's doing. <laughs> So as you can see, it's kicking into game reduction only on the S's and the sibilances in the vocal performance, and it's doing its job. Now, again, I wanna say this, I use this exact chain in all of my mixes, and it doesn't matter what plugins I'm using. The result is the same. It doesn't matter if I'm using stock plugins or Waves plugins or some other brand's plugins or the stock plugins in Reaper. It's the process that matters. Now, the truth is when it comes to producing professional sounding mixes, so much of your final results comes down to how well you understand basic EQ and compression. The problem is so many of us misunderstand these basic concepts and I don't want this for you. Now, because of this, I've put something together called my crisp and clear heavy mix formula. The crisp and clear heavy mix formula is a PDF cheat sheet that contains all of my starting points for EQ and compression for all of the main instruments within a rock or metal production. It also provides clickable links to private tutorials as well as a multi-track download for each of the tutorials so you can practice the mixing lessons along with me. Now the crisp and clear heavy mix formula is absolutely free right now and you can have direct access by clicking the link below in this video's description. Now, if you're truly interested in producing pro level results in your home studio with the gear you already have, there is a card above me right now with a link to a playlist where you can watch me produce an entire song using nothing but budget gear, all being recorded in non-studio spaces while simultaneously producing an album quality song and mix and final master. Now, if this interests you, I highly recommend checking out this three-part series. And also I will leave a link to the playlist in this video's description. Now, if you have found this video helpful and informative, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. Till next time, happy mixing.